So, Ember says she has an AI friend who has some security and wants us to take out the security. She's being very vague about this, by the way, about who this friend is and whether the friend really wants us to be there. But uh, once again, it's not our place to, to question it. So here's what we have to do. Uh, we have to head into this central host here where there will be some execution agents in here that are holding files and the file IDs may be anything between 200 and 299 inclusive, meaning that there's a hundred total files that it could be. And uh, you have no idea what those IDs are. Uh, one thing that is constant, though, aside from the links, which usually are, is that the number of execution agent a execution agents in each host is the same. So there's always two in each of the branches, and there's always six in the center, uh, which is going to be useful for our, our approach here. And another thing to note is that if you kill all of the execution agents in the branches, which is one of the requirements, it says in the bottom, uh, terminate all other execution agents. Uh, if I terminate these two agents here, the link to the previous one will be busted. So we can't kill these agents coming in. We have to do it on our way out. So here's what execution agent A is going to do. First, we're going to head to the center. We just simply link 800 five times to get into the middle. Then, because we know that there's always exactly six here, we're just going to run a kill six times. There you go. And now we have our drop files. Now, because we don't know what the IDs are, we have to brute force it between the 100. And my original implementation, I just went, okay, 200 through 299, try, the, try them all on a, on a single loop. But since I'm going for faster cycles, I realized that I could parallelize that. And so what I do is I create five different execution agents that'll be in charge of a range. So one that'll do 200 to 220, one that'll do 221 to 200, well, I guess, it would be 200 to 219, then 220 to 239, etc. So that's what's happening in this block of code here. I copy 200 into 20 or, or 20 into T to say you're in charge of 20 files, and I start at 200. And what it'll do is it'll create a scavenge uh, bot, which will be in charge of handling that range of picking up those. Uh, those files and then I'll increase the starting point by 20 and then create another scavenger this one's now starting at 220 and then one that starts at 240 one that starts at 260 and then one that starts at 280 is ourself will be in charge of 280 uh, execution agent a will be I rather would say and so what they'll do is they'll create a file grabber which they'll just blindly try and grab the file that's in their X register and then head back home that's all they do so we'll create a file grabber, subtract one from T and add one to X and then jump uh, and jump back and repeat this loop. So what will end up happening, as you just saw right there, one of our guys managed to actually find a file and return back alive with it. Let's see what happened. Let's see how. OK, I wanted to catch one doing it as well. So this guy managed to actually grab a file uh, and all he's going to do is just head on back pretty uninteresting in all in all uh in all honesty the complexity is pretty low so i'm gonna let this run for a little bit until execution agent a reaches the end of his his range uh we now know that we have we've reached 300 on x and we have a test here did we reach our I, sorry we have a test here I check to see if our ending number is 300. This will eliminate all of the other scavengers except for my original execution agent A. This is because I only need one bot to take care of the uh, to take care of the cleanup. So the other guys will clear out of here. Execution agent A knows that he is the last one, and what he's going to do is he is going to head back and then drop off a killer bot. This will, the killer bot will give us the time that execution agent A needs to cross this bridge before these guys get, uh, before these guys get destroyed. And they will also fight back as well. So you have to, if you want to kill both of them in a single, with a single execution agent, you have to do two kill commands in a row. You cannot have any kind of like an increment or something. You have to do kill, kill in order to get the speed to take these two guys out. Cause here's what'll happen. He just, 24 will execute the kill. This guy is going to retaliate and do a kill, but at the same time, 24 is also gonna kill. So they're gonna end up shooting each other. 
And we're going to repeat that process as well in each of these four. And then at the end, Execution Agent A will take the role as the last killer and he'll take out the last two. And we've cleaned up. We let, we let the other agents take care of cleaning up Execution Agent A in the end. And we actually managed to get this job done in 113 cycles, which is pretty dang fast, I'd say. I was happy to to see a, a simpler solution when the last job was pretty difficult by comparison.